friends welcome to this space if you are new here hi my name is kim i am an author illustrator and here on this platform i like to share cozy and intentional content about books and writing and lifestyle in hopes to inspire you to live a slow paced and cozy life. In today's video, I am sharing new year reading routines that I have decided to commit to this year. I believe that when it comes to reading, having certain routines in place can help us commit to certain reading goals or just help improve our reading in general. These are not necessarily new reading routines for me, but they are reading routines that I have previously committed to and mid last year they sort of fell off. I am someone who likes to have what you would call a low stakes routine because the pressure of having full on committed routines really stresses me out and makes me anxious. So having beginner friendly and very loosely committed reading routines takes off so much pressure when it comes to reading. The following routines are all routines routines that can help with comprehension and really in taking what it is that we are reading. They are routines that have helped me with staying focused and to concentrate more. So with that being said, here are five reading routines that I am committing to this year. Create a cozy reading environment. I cannot stress enough how much this has helped me in having a more consistent reading routine. If I have an environment where I can fully unwind, feel relaxed, and immerse myself into what I am reading, then I guarantee you I will be there reading for hours. Creating a cozy reading environment can look and feel like many things. Personally, I like to have dedicated areas in my space that I like to read at. Maybe it's near a window or near good lighting. I like to create a nice comfy spot, maybe bring a favorite blanket or pillow over to that space, something I am even emotionally attached to. I find that when it comes to reading, it's all about putting our guards down and shaking off the heaviness of our days so we can fully immerse ourselves into the books we are reading. And when I personally surround myself by the things that bring me comfort, or that make me feel safe, then I am more willing to fully just relax and enjoy my book. Creating a cozy environment can be as simple as claiming a certain area of your home, your cozy little reading nook. It can be as simple as bringing a scented candle or having some warm lighting or maybe even bring a stack of your favorite books and display them in a little side table in your new reading nook area. It doesn't even have to be indoors. If you've watched Gilmore Girls, then you would remember that part when Rory is at college at Yale and she lays claim to a tree and declares it as her reading tree. Having areas, even outdoors, or claiming your own reading tree, I feel can really help set the stage for fully dedicating to reading. Our minds are not the only ones working hard when it comes to reading and comprehension of what we are reading, but also our bodies are working hard and they get tired too by sitting down in the same position or area. I like to set 20 minute timers to read and then break for five minutes. And in those five minutes, I like to stretch and move my body, drink lots and lots of water, and of course, I like to boost my serotonin by giving my pup lots of kisses and cuddles. <laughs> I remember being a kid 
and one of my favorite ways of reading was reading out loud. The thing about reading out loud that I liked was that it was entertaining for me to switch around my voice in between characters and even act out some of the parts that I was reading. For some reason, reading out loud made my entire reading experience so much more enjoyable and I found myself reading for a lot longer when I was reading out loud. I also found that when I I read out loud, it's easier for me to sort of comprehend and really analyze what I just read. For me, it can be pretty difficult when I am reading silently and there is already so much going on in my head while still also trying to make sense of what I just read. Reading out loud feels almost like a sort of map being displayed right before my eyes and I am seeing exactly what I am reading. Of course, reading out loud isn't accessible to everyone and sometimes we are also not in the adequate environment to read out loud. If that is the case for you, I also recommend stopping in between paragraphs or chapters and really intaking what you just read. The goal for me when it comes to reading isn't about getting through books quicker. It's about really immersing ourselves into the one wonderful stories we are reading and making our reading experience enjoyable. So I will be doing lots of reading out loud whenever and as much as I can. This next one I often forget to do because once I am invested in a book, I am invested. Another routine I am committing to this year is to annotate the book I am reading. I understand not everyone is a fan of this because we don't want to write all over our books. But for me personally, I find that annotating books is a great way to really give personality to our books and sort of declare them ours. I absolutely love it when I buy a used book and there are annotations and notes from the previous owner. I love reading what others interpreted from certain paragraphs or chapters, what their views were. It really almost feels as if you are discussing the book with someone else. Because I am that person in my family who lets others borrow their books, I feel like annotating my books will even help those who read that same book after me guide them into understanding more what the book is about, or maybe get a different perspective than theirs. I also find that annotating books helps as well with comprehension, or simply if you find something funny or a good phrase, something you want to come back to, then that is what annotating is for. Annotating a book can help us mark those pages in our books that we wish to consistently come back to. Annotating can become a wonderful experience if we give it the time and make our reading experience that much more enjoyable. If you absolutely do not wish to annotate your book, then another thing I like to do is to keep a reading journal where I write the title of the book I am currently reading, the author's name. I also like to make a section of single words that come to mind that I feel represent the book. I like to write the main character's name or other important characters in the story. 
I have in the past had sections about chapters that stood out for that book, what I liked about them, possible themes or tropes highlighted in that book, and I like to make sections in my reading journal. As someone who is working on their own novel, I find that keeping a reading journal helps me not only further comprehend the storyline, but also helps me stay organized about favorite themes or tropes or writing styles that stood out to me throughout the book. Really studying and keeping track of books in this manner has helped me step into the type of writing I wish to create for my future novels. I think that this technique is also great if you are in a book club. Having a journal where you can keep notes and bring up in your book club discussions can be very helpful, especially if you are like me and your memory isn't the best and need some sort of note taking to remind you of what you want to say, mention, or remember, then this technique can most definitely be of use to you. You can create a variety of maybe different sections in your reading journal that are altered to your own liking or that you feel are important for you when you are reading. As I mentioned before, reading routines for me isn't about reading faster, nor do I promise you that reading superpowers will come from these routines. But what I do guarantee you is a more enjoyable reading experience and helping you fully immerse yourself into a story. And if you so happen to gain super fast reading superpowers, then that is just an added plus, I suppose. If you are someone who is getting reacquainted with reading, I am sure these beginner-friendly reading routines could be of help to you. For those of us who are getting back in touch with reading, it is important to not overwhelm ourselves with reading. If you found any of these suggestions helpful, I would very much appreciate it if you liked, subscribed to my channel, let me know down in the comments below if you happen to have any other reading routine suggestions. I love learning from other fellow readers on here. Thank you so much for being here, friend. Remember that you can create the life that you want. You so deserve it. Until then. Take care and bye for now.